Morning, fellowship. If you must talk, talk to God. If you must whisper, whisper a prayer as we prepare for worship. Happy Sunday, fellowship. I'm Mark Jones, and this is your weekly edition of FNN Fellowship News Network. Join us for Refuel this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Pastor Sharp will be leading us with a powerful lesson on the theme of carrying my grief case. Don't miss out on this opportunity to come together, grow, and be inspired. We can't wait to see you there. Mark your calendars for Saturday, December 2nd, as the Callahan Foundation hosts their 15th annual scholarship gala at the Tinley Park Convention Center. Our very own pastor, Reginald Wayne Sharp, will be a special honoree, and it will be live entertainment by P.J. Morton. 
you can purchase tickets on their website to attend. Proceeds will go towards supporting college students entering the workforce. We are praying for the family of Mr. Joseph Kist, the brother of virtual member Caroline Melson. Please keep this family and all of those who have experienced the loss of a loved one in your prayers. If you have lost a loved one, please call the church office or complete our bereavement form on our website so that we will be notified. And now we have some special announcements for you. Check them out. What's going on, family? It's your friend, your brother, Pastor Kevin Bassett. I'm so excited. I have a quick announcement for you. January the 19th, my full project is finally coming. The title is It's Not Over. It's going to be available all over the world on all digital outlets, but you know how we get down. I want you to go to KevinVassett.com and get it. Now, why am I announcing it today? Because as of November the 10th, you can start pre-ordering right now. And as a gift, when you pre-order, you're going to get two free songs. And one of them is the new single that's out. It's ready. Most Hi, I want you to go to my website or whatever digital outlet you want to go to, and I want you to pre-order today. Get those two new songs and listen. Also, the new video for Most High. Yeah, it's available right now. We give you glory. We give you honor. You are so worthy. We lift your name. Everybody say. Go to my YouTube page or anywhere, wherever you watch videos, and you can check out the new single as well. Let's pre-order. Let's get these numbers up. Let's change the world because, listen, it's not over. God's got some good things coming your way in Jesus' name. I love you guys, and thank you. you so Join us for Empowering the Village, a discussion on adoption and child advocacy a town hall and panel discussion on Wednesday, November 15th at 5.30 p.m. in the main sanctuary. Adoption touches lives in profound ways, shaping the destinies of countless individuals and families. It's a process that spans hope, joy, resilience, and the enduring power of love. However, important conversations still need to occur, questions to be answered, and perspectives to be shared. This Adoption Town Hall aims to be a space for these discussions where ideas and experiences can blend to create a brighter, more inclusive future for foster care and adoption. We look forward to seeing you here Wednesday at 5.30. That's a wrap for this week's edition of FNN. Please check out the church website and our social media for these announcements and so much more. And for real-time updates, text Fellowship Chicago, that's one word, to 55949. As we move forward, stand on your feet and let's worship the Lord together. Good morning, fellowship. Good morning, virtual ship. We welcome you to our 1045 a.m. experience. Psalms 91 11 says, For he commands his angels concerning us and guard us in all our ways. So we thank you, God, for being a suddenly God. We thank you, God, for keeping us in our 2%, God. We thank you, God, that you healing, directing, and you chest, you healing and directing, and you uplifting us in this place. You said they that worship you in spirit must worship you in spirit and in truth, God. We thank you for our pastor, Pastor Reginald Wayne Shaw Jr. That's going to bring a word, a healing word, God, that's going to break somebody free in their mind, free in their heart, and free in their spirit, God. They will say, what must I do to be saved? So, God, we thank you, and it is in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.
Hallelujah. Who's asking the Lord not to pass you by? Hallelujah. Do not pass me by, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Truly the Lord is in this place. And we thank God for brand new mercies. The Lord stopped by with some gifts for you. I want you to breathe in and breathe out. The Lord gave you that. I want you to breathe in one more time and breathe out. The Lord gave you that right there too. Can anybody thank God for not passing you by this morning? When he was passing up wake up calls, he didn't pass you by this morning. When he was passing by with reasonable portions of health and strength, he didn't pass you by this morning. And we thank God this morning. I want you to go to and greet someone near you. Let them know it's good to see you. Let them know it's good to see you. Hallelujah. Do not pass me by. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the very presence of the Lord. Can you help me thank God for the voices of Genesis under the direction of our own First Lady, Lady Brianna Sullivan Sharp. Thank you so much, VOG. Thank you so much, VOG. It is so good to see each and every one of you this morning. I want to ask if there are any first-time guests, first-time guests, could you please stand so we can acknowledge you? Any first-time visitors, friends? Thank you. Thank you for stopping by the ship. Thank you for stopping by the ship. Thank you for stopping by the ship. We want to acknowledge this group. This is the Trinity College. Uh, it's a choir, right? A choir, yes. The Trinity College Choir from Paleo Heights under the direction of Miss Tony Esker, the assistant professor of music at Trinity Christian College. Let's give them a hand and thank them for joining us. Amen, amen. We're so, so glad to have them back with us. Amen, amen. Y'all, I'm happy to report. I'm happy to report. I don't have any new death notices for us this Sunday. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us yesterday. Yesterday was a very busy day here on the ship. We kicked that day off yesterday with a Thanksgiving giveaway. We gave away so much food for our community and we thank each and every one of you for coming out. We wanna thank uh, our volunteers. We wanna thank, I'm, I'm, her name slips me right now, but our, our, our leader of, Ms. H Laverne Hale, that's right, Miss Laverne Hale, who leads our community table, who leads our Freely Give efforts. Amen. We want to thank her so much. And then, and then, and then we moved on upstairs at 10 a.m. and we had our veterans breakfast where we honored veterans that are a part of Fellowship Chicago. Amen. And I want to thank Minister Deborah Earl for leading that effort. 
She did a fantastic job, along with so many others, putting on that great event. And we want to let you know, veterans, if you were not able to attend, we do have several pieces of information for you in our Welcome Center that we ask you to go out and get those resources. Uh, there's some information about VA benefits, information about insurance, and we want to make sure that you're well equipped as a veteran and you have all the benefits that you have sacrificed to receive. Let the church say amen. And then we also went over to the Fountain Hills Golf Club and we had the marriage ministry brunch. And it was a great, great time. I mean, it was a great time where marriages were mended back together by asking a, a panel several questions. And we were so, so excited to be able to go over and do that. Great things are always happening here at Fellowship. We urge you, we admonish you to stay abreast of all that's going on here at Fellowship Chicago. We're headed to Atlanta next week. We're headed to Atlanta next week with Pastor Sharp as the House of Hope Atlanta celebrates their 147th church anniversary. And we want you to know that there is a travel itinerary that has been prepared. And we want you to go to the Fellowship Chicago website to receive that itinerary so that you can stay abreast on what Fellowship will be doing as a church. I also want to let you know, if you see at the bottom of the screen, there are several different colors and age uh, brackets. The builders, builders are those who were born between 1945 and older. What happens each year at the House of Hope Atlanta, they ask those who fall within these certain demographics to wear a color so that you can stand out with those who are also in your demographic. So builders, those born between 1945 and earlier are asked to wear black. Next week, if you're going to Atlanta, boomers are asked to wear brown. Those born between 1946 and 1965, busters will be wearing gray. Those born between 1966 and 1983, Bridgers will be wearing red, those born between 1984 and 2003, and our Blossoms, those born between 2004 to now, were asked to wear blue. And that's if you're going to Atlanta, the, it's casual wear. If you've already got you an outfit, don't worry about it. But listen, if you want to be a part of what the House of Hope Atlanta is doing, feel free to get in line. Amen. Amen. We're excited because our children's ministry uh, will also be going to Atlanta. The directors of our children's ministry will also be going to Atlanta. So next week, next week, we will not have our kids zone. We will not have our kids zone. So just take note of that. Uh, parents, they'll need to be with you during the 1045 service. Start your Thanksgiving off right with worship on Tuesday, November the 21st. We'll be right here in the sanctuary for a Thanksgiving worship experience with Pastor John Hanna, the pastor of New Life Southeast. We encourage you to join us. Doors will open at 6 p.m. And we invite you to invite a friend, invite loved ones to join us for that Thanksgiving worship experience. This, two, this, excuse me, this Wednesday, this Wednesday at 5.30 p.m., we will be having Empowering the Village Town Hall. It will take place here in the main sanctuary. We'll be discussing foster care, adoption, and child advocacy. And this event will be hosted by our own pastor, Sister Deborah Farmer, who is a member of Fellowship that moved to Atlanta, had an experience with adopting, and she wants to empower others. And so we're having an event here this Wednesday. We encourage you to come out to support that event right here in the sanctuary at 530 this Wednesday. Who's being blessed by Refuel? Who's being blessed by Refuel? Our refuel series, Carrying My Grief Case, will continue this Tuesday, and we invite you to come out this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Our pastor is equipping us to carry our grief case. This is a difficult season for many of us, and you may not be mourning the loss of a loved one. You may be mourning the loss of a job, maybe mourning the loss of a relationship. We want you to come out and be empowered to put some tools in your grief case in your grief case. So meet us this Tuesday. We want to remind you that both our children's and our youth ministries will be open to serve our students. So please don't, don't, don't delay your coming because you don't have childcare. We will have lessons prepared for our students that will be age appropriate for them. Amen? Amen. I want to invite Pastor Sharp up to lead us further in the short service. Amen. Let's stand to our feet and welcome him. Thank you, sir.
Come on, this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, turn that clap into a praise, and thank your God for bringing you through another week. Hadn't God been good? Smile at somebody and tell them, God's been good to me. God's been good to me now. There's a lot going on, but he's been good to me. You may take your seats. I'm just grateful to be alive today. Thank you, Pastor Pope. And we are all still on a high from this past week. We do so much around here that we forget, man, the Lord is doing amazing things in the life of Fellowship Chicago. The sisters and the brothers are still on a high from Women's World Day of Prayer. Lord have mercy. Can we celebrate the visionary? Lady Bree, come on, let's thank God for her. Stand up, Rapunzel. Stand, y'all help celebrate Lady Bree. What a one, and to all of the ladies that helped her, it, she couldn't do it by herself. There were a team of sisters that helped her. Give the whole team a hand. What a phenomenally powerful day. Sisters, wasn't it something all day long? It was off the chain in Jesus' name, and we celebrate that, and thank you so, so much to all of the events that took place yesterday, including the youth had an event yesterday. They went and hung out. Come on, show some love to our youth ministries. We're a busy little church around here. We're a busy little church, and I'm excited about it. I'm just glad to be alive, y'all. And, and I mean, seriously, I'm not just talking. I'm glad to be alive. Wow, people at church I hadn't seen in months. This is special. I'm just grateful, grateful, grateful that the Lord is still growing our church. Let me tell you an update. You know that we are getting ready to eliminate a million dollars of debt in less than 10 months. Can I tell y'all what we were able to do since last week? It's coming up on the screen. I want you to see how much we have left. Just $48,000. Come on, fellowship. In less than 10 months. To God be the glory for the great things God has done. And I'm super, super excited about that. I'm super, super excited about that. And I'm, I'm grateful that only we're waiting on 480 people to sow $100. That's all that means is that 480 people have not given their $100 yet. I want to uh, invite. I want to almost pull on my virtual ship family. We need you in order to make this goal a reality. The goal is and what is going to happen is this will be finished by the end of the month. We will not go into December talking about fun first Sunday this is done this month and I thank you fellowship when I when I tell you I was almost terrified to bring this before the church because I don't play with God and I don't play with God's people so I had to be prayerful and make sure Lord are you sure you want us to do this because if I get out here and these folks not with me this is going to look real real bad but fellowship from the bottom of my heart thank you for following the vision God gave me to help us eliminate this debt and now we're just $48,000 away whereas in February we we were a million dollars away, but now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that works within us. So look at your neighbor and say, let's finish this thing. Let's finish this thing. So if you've not been able to give your $100 above tithes and offerings, I want to encourage you to do that. Let's thank God for the balcony. There are people sitting in the balcony today. I want to celebrate my balcony Christians. Thank you so much. I see you. I see you. They be having church in the balcony, but also help me thank God for those down in the champion's room. There are people right now having to go. Come on, give them a big hand. Thank you for not leaving the same Holy Ghost that we feel in the sanctuary is the same Holy Ghost we feel downstairs as well. I'm going to run down there momentarily just to wave at you all and thank you for not leaving. It's giving time on the ship. It's giving time. Let's get our smiles on. Let's get our joy up. The Bible says God loves what kind of giver? So above tithes and offerings, we are going to get that $100 C. Some of you couldn't do it last week. It's cool. Do it this week. Let's do this. Let's finish this. We've kept the numbers in front of you because we wanted you to know what we were trying to accomplish. And so I appreciate you. Come on, quickly. Lift your phone to the Lord. Lift your seed to the Lord. If you're giving $100 above tithes and offerings, we have some envelopes. There are some people walking down the aisles. If you need them, drop your hands real quick so we can make 
make sure if you need an envelope for Fun First Sunday to give, lift your hand high, and some of the ambassadors are ready to serve you. Thank you. I appreciate you so, so much. Now, let's all lift our hands, lift our phones, lift our tablets, however you're giving, whether you're Android or you're apostolic. In the words of Pastor Paul Little, lift it to the Lord and repeat after me. God, come on, say it with authority. God, I know you're able. And I've seen, we've seen, suddenly blessings. Do it again for your glory and for our good. Receive our gifts in Jesus' name, amen. Come on, if you're bringing a tangible gift, the deacons are here ready to serve you. And if you're giving online virtually through technology, go ahead and give right now. Come on, let the whole church give. Everybody, everybody, pull that phone out and look at the screen and pick the easiest way for you to sow into the house of God tonight, this morning rather. Thank you so, so much. We appreciate you. My people who were called by my name would humble themselves and pray, God said. God say the if they would turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, God said. Deliverance, yeah. I 
good old school fellowship classic right there. Come on, stand to your feet, grab your Bibles. Anybody need God to send some power? Send the Pentecost. Lord knows we need it. Lord knows we need it. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God for God's spirit, God's presence. Well, I just heard that there is someone amongst us who just said they're paying off the rest of the debt. I need you to grab your neighbor by the hand. I need you to grab your neighbor by the hand and say it. God said it would be suddenly. What's happening now is going to happen for you. So take the next few minutes and give God some praise for suddenly favor, suddenly blessing, suddenly increase. You've been praying for it. You've been working for it. But God said it's going to happen I'm sorry, I need the whole church. I don't care if you can't dance. Pretend like you can dance. Move your feet a minute, cause the chains are broken. Hey! Hey! God did it. 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 We can dance. I don't think y'all understand. God did it. God did it. We can shout. God did it. God did it. God did it. No more waiting. No more waiting. God did it. God did it. You can pray. You can pray. Now listen, I ain't trying to make you emotional, but I do need you to tap somebody on the shoulder and say, neighbor, you don't have to shout this time. Tell them I'm gonna shout for you. Same favor, same grace, same power, same. He did more than you ever.
the deeper lesson yeah we can shout but the deeper lesson is do what the Lord tells you to do and it ain't your business how it's gonna work out just walk by faith I hope somebody faith catapults to another level to know all things are possible I told the 8 o'clock service, I said, it's going to be done before December, didn't I? I said, we're not going into December talking about this. God says, if anything, you're going to have overflow. There's some other debts. Some other people need to be blessed. And I want you to lift your hands in this atmosphere. I, I'm, 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 tr I'm, I'm trying to get to my sermon. I... Lift your hands. Because literally what you need is in the room. <laughs> I don't care what you need. God says it's in the room. It's in the room. Just say, Lord, same favor. What you've done in this house, I claim by faith, is already happening in my house. I will not worry. I will not stress. I will put it all in your hands. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let the whole church say amen. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, have mercy.
You've been good, Lord. I don't know what to do. <laughs> All I know to do is say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Whoever did it, may the God of peace fill you with peace. And may you receive double, 100 fold favor. It's a little bit deeper than money for me. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Some of you all got to get out the boat. You've been bound by fear too long. And, and some of us, grab your Bibles, go to Psalm 61. That's my plan. Some of us, you keep comparing your now to your past. And, and yesterday is, is not today. So you're talking about what went wrong before, how it didn't work out before. I just hear the word again in my spirit. Try again. <laughs> Dream again. Have faith again. Trust God again and leave all the results up to God. Today, fellowship, we are a debt-free church. Doesn't mean everything is perfect. We got some things to work out. We have a lot to do. But don't miss this moment. But it all started with a leap of faith. And I don't want you to miss that the same favor is on your life. But just walk by faith and not by sight. I don't know who that's for today. It's going to be hard to survive scared. And God is not giving you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And God will give you little victories to remind you of what he's able to do in your future. Come to Psalm 61 with me. I'm, Lord have mercy. Thank you, Lord. There's so many testimonies in this room. That's what's wrong with your neighbor. That's why they've been turned all service. <laughs> Somebody has some flashbacks when the Lord shocked them. Welcome, Trinity. We're glad you're here. Guests and friends, we're glad you're here. Let me, let me move on. Let me move on. Let me just be obedient and we'll see where we end up. Psalm 61, verse 1 through 3, King James Version. This is what David writes. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been... a shelter for me and a strong tower 
from the enemy. I want to talk today from this thought very simply, overcoming being overwhelmed. Thank you. You may be seated. Overcoming being overwhelmed. Tell your neighbor, I know I don't look like it, <laughs> but today I'm trying to overcome being overwhelmed. It's so much. It's so much. It's just so much. Those words are the words that really capture how you feel this morning, if you be honest. Have you ever been there? It's just so much. Has your heart ever been overwhelmed before? Where you needed everything to stop. You, you, you wanted to tell God, I just need everything to stop for a minute. Because I haven't gotten over one thing. And before I really get over that, something else hits. And family stress. Financial stress. Marital stress. Worried about your children's stress. You're entering into the holidays and you, like me, are probably thinking about all the seats that are going to be empty. You move into the holiday and everybody's putting up Christmas trees and Christmas lights. And you low-key trying to ask yourself, I don't know where y'all got the energy to do all that. Because it's just so much. Life can be overwhelming. Am I talking to some real people? who know what the preacher's talking about already. The, the old adage says, if it's not one thing, it's another. It's always something. And then you, you look at the news and you see these babies and these hospitals being bombed over in Palestine. The whole world, even in America, even in the streets of Chicago, people are crying out, asking for a ceasefire. And some of the top leaders in our nation seem to have a deaf ear to the cries of the people on the ground because innocent lives are being lost. And what you really see right now are the children of Abraham fighting and warring against each other. Abraham's firstborn was Ishmael, and that's where you get the lineage of Islam. And Abraham's second son was Isaac, and that's where you get the lineage of Judaism, where Jews come from. And right now, you're watching Jews and Muslims fight each other as if they don't have the same God. Their lineage, all three of the major world religions, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, all have ties to Abraham in the book of Genesis. And so it's not a matter of which side are you on. At some point, you've got to say, God is not pleased with any of this carnage. God is not pleased with any of this violence. This war is evil, period. No matter who's hollering that they're right and who's declaring that they're wrong. And then you can't just talk about a ceasefire in in Hamas. You can't just talk about a ceasefire on the Gaza Strip. You're wondering, can there be a ceasefire on the south side of Chicago? Can we get it together right down here? It's so much. It's absolutely overwhelming. And here you are sitting here today dressed up and you look wonderful. But I am assured of the fact that if we cut underneath the facade of that makeup and that hairdo and that suit and that outfit that you invested time to put on, there sits a person in your seat, not the one beside you, in your seat who knows what it feels like to be overwhelmed. I appreciate that you still still came to church today because David says when my heart is overwhelmed lead me to a rock slow down did you hear David who is now a king David who is a ruler David who is a monarch David who is in a position of prominence and power he says when my heart is overwhelmed it did not say if because you won't get out of this life without your heart being overwhelmed your heart your mind your spirit your emotions he said when my heart I'm glad he said when because it lets me know that everybody is a candidate for catastrophe everybody is a candidate for trouble everybody is a 
candidate for tragedy. He did not say if your heart is overwhelmed. He said when my heart is overwhelmed. And sometimes it's not your season, but just keep on living. And that's why you got to be careful and fragile with people who are in their rough season because this is not a matter of if. This is a matter of when. And just because you're up today does not mean you're going to be up tomorrow. When your heart is overwhelmed, how do we overcome being overwhelmed? I'm not going to take long to preach this one. Here's what the psalmist gives us. Number one, he says you got to release your anguish. Tap your neighbor on the shoulder say, release that thing, release that thing, release that thing. Here's what he says in verse one. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. I appreciate David, King David, writing this. Verse two, he says, from the end of the earth I will cry, literally meaning it feels like his world was ending. It felt like he was at the end about to fall off into, into the abyss of nothingness and nihilism. He felt like it was all over and yet from the end yet when he felt like there was nothing else left he said I'm still crying out to you oh God I need to tell you something quickly church you don't get any points trying to pretend like you strong you don't win any points with God or yourself trying to pretend like everything's alright when everything is not alright you gotta release that anguish and when you come to church let me tell you what makes fellowship special this is a sacred space of worship where you don't have to put on you don't have to act like you got it together where are the saints who can say I did press to get here and I almost stayed home but these tears are real this pain is real this grief is real this devastation is real this heartbreak is real and I'm glad that we came up in here together because you sitting on a pew with somebody who knows how to get God attention cry out open your mouth right now throw your hands up right now and let God know I need you Oh, I need you every hour. I need you. Stop pretending. I'm coming for you today. I'm talking to the person that's been crying uncontrollably. The person whose mind has been in overdrive and you're overthinking. Lift your hand in this atmosphere like David. When you're overwhelmed, you got to know how to get in touch with the one who can help you conquer it. He's still God. And see, praise is about God's activity, but worship is about God's identity. I need some worshipers, some people who say, God, God, I need you. And it ain't good right now, but you're good. I'm going to lift up my voice. Lift your hand to God right now and just cry out. The old deacon used to say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. I need thee, oh God. And if you don't need none, you sit right there playing on your phone. And if you don't need God, I'm sorry. Come back next Sunday. But I'm talking to some people that know if God don't show up soon, my whole brain's going to crack. My whole house is going to crack. Somebody cry out and ask God to help me today. Give me strength in this place. Give me stability in this place. Keep my mind in this place. Hold me together in this place. My babies need you. My house needs you. I'm really not preaching a point. I'm leading you in worship because this is how you get delivered. You throw your head up, your hands up, your eyes up and say, it's me, oh Lord. I'm only talking to the people who are under so much pressure you can't even articulate it. You grieving so bad you don't even know when it started. You got compounded grief at this point. And here you are trying to hold those tears in. Let them out. Let them out. Let them out. You miss your mama. You miss your son. You miss your child. You miss your father. You miss your sibling. You miss that friend that you had to bury. And God said, when you come to church, stop putting on and get your deliverance. You better start sitting down when you come up in here and tell everybody on your row, forgive me in advance. Because I started out with my makeup together, but I don't know how this thing going to end today. Because I need God too bad. I can't pretend any longer. I'm looking for some ride or die radical worshipers who can say, I will flip this chair all the way over today. But I'm not leaving fellowship before. For I feel the wind of the Holy Ghost touch my mind. I need peace that surpasses. Lift that hand and ask him for it. Lift that hand and beseech him for it. Lift that hand and pull on the anointing in this house. Stop pretending like you all right. Because you can't heal what you won't reveal. Hear me, oh God, when I cry. 
I never thought I'd be in this place. I never thought it would hurt this bad. I never thought I would have to say bye-bye and see you later to that person. I never thought I would be in the front row at the funeral closing. A I never thought it would be me. But God, I need you. And even when God doesn't do what we want God to do, can I ask you a question? Do you trust him enough to still worship him? Do you trust him enough to still know he's the I am that I am? He's the keeper of your soul. He's the preserver of your life. He's a wonderful counselor. He's a mighty God. He's a, I'm talking to the worshipers right through here. You got to know who he is. You got to know some about his resume. He's still a lily in the valley. He's still a bright and morning star. He's still a doctor in a sick room. He's He's still a lawyer in a courtroom. He still can give peace that surpasses all understanding. He still will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. And when you are overwhelmed, aren't you glad you can call somebody who can help you with what you can't carry yourself? Oh, release the anguish. But when your life is overwhelmed, when your mind is overwhelmed, when your heart is overwhelmed, you've got to realize you have assurance. Somebody say, I've got assurance. He said he cried out to the Lord, verse 2, from the ends of the earth. And then he says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. Now watch the, watch the tension. David is a king. He's sitting in the highest seat in the nation. But as high as he is, he needs some higher than him. Well, let me talk to the bougie folks in here. Let me talk to my CEOs in here. Let me talk to my leaders in here. Let me talk to my educated crew in here who think that you have ascended. I don't care how high you go. You're going to still at some point need some higher than you. I will lift up my eyes. To the hills, where does my help come from? My help come from the Lord. He called out to God to lead him to a rock higher than him because he knew God had the power to pilot. He knew God had the power to pivot. And he knew God had the power to protect. He knew God had the power to pilot. He said, lead me. I know I'm a leader, but every leader needs a leader. Every tow truck sometimes needs a tow truck. Every shepherd needs a shepherd. Every parent needs a parent. Everybody in the front needs somebody in their front. Everybody on top needs somebody on top of them because at some point, you run out of resources when everybody's pulling on you. God can pilot you. God can pivot. Lead me to a rock. Take me somewhere else. The message Bible says, you always give me space to catch my breath. Have you ever needed God to put you somewhere where you could just breathe again, relax again, recover again? And then he said, lead me to a rock that's higher than I. Because how they fought back then is not how we fight now. There was not massive military weaponry. There were not uh, atomic bombs to be dropped and guns and bazookas and, uh, and assault rifles. You had to use geography for your safety. And so literally the higher you go if you're at war, the safer you are because you can see where the enemy's moving before they get too close. You can see what's coming before it jumps up on you. Lead me to a rock. See, some of y'all want to go higher so you can be seen, but you really ought to want to go higher so you can see because your spirit of discernment can be clearer the higher God takes you. Lead me to a rock. If war is going to jump off, it ain't going to catch me slipping. If somebody's trifling around me, they're not going to catch me off guard because he's going to lead me up to a rock. And that rock signifies my safety. Can I ask you one question? question so I don't start hollering too early has God kept anybody safe has God ever wrapped somebody up in a hedge of protection around? I'm sorry I'm loud already but I've lived too much to be quiet and God able to keep you safe Lord I know I'm up here but I need something higher than me lead me to a rock higher than I this ain't the first time David talked like this. You can go to Psalm 27 and you see something similar. He said, the Lord is my light. I wish I had a church up in here. I want this atmosphere to shift because somebody going to leave here better than the way you came. Just If you, if, if you just mess around and tap in a little bit today, you're going to leave here full of God's Holy Ghost. The Lord is my light 
and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid when my enemies and my foes came up they go that word when again when my enemies and my foes come upon me to eat up my flesh they stumbled and fell though in host should and kept against me my heart should not fear the war should rise up against me in this will I be confident you don't be confident when you come out of it you the real confidence is why you're still in it and you can be confident in in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord and that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Here it is. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. Watch the text. He shall set me up on a rock and now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies I know you are rock for others but can you give your rock some praise for being a rock for you when you couldn't be a rock for anybody how about somebody say he'll keep you safe tell him he'll keep you sane that's the wrong neighbor. How about somebody else and say, he'll keep you safe. He'll keep you sane. He'll keep you sane. He'll keep you safe. And every now and then, you got to say, take me up just a little bit, God. I'm not trying to show off. I'm not trying to look like I got it all together. I just need a better visual. I need protection and perspective. I need protection and perspective. lead me guide me along the way for if you lead me I will not stray Lord let me walk each day with thee oh lead me oh Lord lead me when I'm at a restaurant and the server's not acting right Y'all know what you do. Now, some of y'all cuss. I don't do that. I try to be a real Christian. You got to push all my buttons to get that button out. But I got some other valves that I try to pull on before I go there. When the server's not acting right at the restaurant, what do you do? May I speak to the manager, please? Can I download something fresh on you? When life gets too crazy for you, here's what your prayer's got to be. May I speak? To the manager, the one who made heaven and earth. May I speak to the manager, the one who's got the keys to open up stuff I can't open up. May I speak to the man because the manager possesses power to do things everybody else can't do. And when you come up in here and come to church, you can sit there and look cute if you want to, but you better get the manager's attention because the manager is still a healer. The manager is still a provider. The manager is still a comforter. Open your mouth for a few minutes and let God know, I need you to take me higher. I need you to do something I can't do. I need you to heal what I can't heal. Therapists are good, but you can touch where they don't reach. When my heart, woo, because heart in Hebrew really means mind. When my mind is overwhelmed, when the innermost being of my personhood is overwhelmed, lead me to a rock that's higher than I. Oh, you've got to release that anguish. You've got to realize you've got assurance, a God who can pilot, a God who can pivot, and a God who can protect You've got to lastly remember the almighty God. Verse 3, don't shout, act like you got good sense. Verse 3, here it is. For thou hast been a shelter. For me, it's the first four words. We can go home with this. For thou has been. And here you are, overwhelmed, so much on your mind, tears keep flowing, can't get that loved one off your mind, stressed about your job, worried about your future, children that jumped off your lap, jumped on your heart. Here you are completely overwhelmed. What are we going to do for holidays? Who going to cook? Where are we going to go? 
Grandma gone now. I've been wondering the same thing. Who gonna cook the greens? Who gonna cook the macaroni? Everybody don't know how to make macaroni thick. Don't nobody want no soupy macaroni. Who gonna cook? Who got the recipes? Can y'all even remember how she used to do it? Everybody's sweet potato pie ain't right because some of y'all got strings in yours. No, I don't want no stringy sweet potato. I want, I want that sweet potato pie. Every bite is a delectable, exquisite experience. And here you are just to go to sleep. You got to wind down. You got all of it under your cabinet. Pinot Noir, Pinot Grigio, Cabernet Sauvignon. Don't ask me how I know. How do you know what I know? Blame it on the goose. Got you feeling loose. Blame it on the Patron. Got you in your zone. Sitting there reflecting on your enemy. Sipping a little Hennessy. You can't even be in church right now. You, you, you just, you just, ooh, you just, we done worshiped and praised and shouted. Somebody just paid $48,000. You just unmoved. You just, you just sitting there just, because you just worry. You on your phone. You scrolling. You looking for an email, waiting on a text. Every time somebody texts you, you get just full of anxiety. When you see them three dots, that mean they about to respond. You just don't know how to move until they finally respond. And you, I mean, did you see my last message? You just stressed. Tension feel. Can't sleep. Got to go get a cigarello from the, from the drugstore to take that out and put some loud, some Reggie and some Kush in it and lick it back together so you can just get high off your own supply. You just, you can't wake up without being high. Can't go to sleep without being high. Can't go to work without being high. How dare you forget what God has already been for you kept you in January, paid bills in February, fought battles in March, rocked you to sleep in April and May, dried your tears in June and July, stood you up with power in August and September, held your hand in October, and he's still God in November. Can you help me preach and shake somebody's hand and use sanitizer later and say, neighbor, don't you forget what God has been for you. If he has fought battles, he will fight battles. If he has dry tears, he will dry tears. If he did rock you to sleep, he will rock you to sleep. If he has made a way, he will make a way. Cause if he did it before, he can do it again. Same God right now, same God back then. So when you can't see up ahead, just turn around and look back and remember what the almighty God has already been for you. I'm glad David said it because I don't know what he was facing, but I'm sure he sat down one day and thought about how God kept him when he had to fight a lion, how God kept him when he had to kill a bear, how God kept him when he had to fight Goliath, how God kept him when King Saul wanted him dead. How God kept him when his own son tried to usurp the kingdom. And if God has kept you in the past, you ought to have some internal stamina. You ought to have some spiritual confidence that if God has kept me before, that God's going to take care of me in the future. Can I practice for going back home next week? I've had some good days. Y'all keep sitting there. I'm having happy now. I've had some bad days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and I've had some sleepless nights. But when I look around, somebody just start looking around. Just start looking around. When I look around and think things over, my good days Outweigh my bad days, so I won't complain. 
God's been good to me. He's been better to me than this whole world that you could ever be. So I'll just lift my hands and say thank you, Lord. Thank you for every mountain. Thank you for every hater. Thank you for every struggle. Thank you for every tear. Thank you for every challenge. Thank you for every disappointment. Thank you for every heartbreak. Thank you for every liar. Thank you for every backbiter. Thank you for every breakup. Thank you for every sadness. Thank you for every valley. Thank you for every river. Because I'm stronger. I'm better. I'm wise. Can y'all help me preach with the little energy I got left? And put your arm on your neighbor's shoulder. Put your hand on your neighbor's shoulder and tell them I know what it feels like to be overwhelmed but tell them be not dismayed whatever whatever betides you God will take care of you tell them God has and God will God will and God has God has and God will God will and God has God has and God will God will and God has God has and God will God will and God has can you praise him can you bless him can you honor him can you extol him with my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise with the heart of thanksgiving I got five words that I can prophesy to you. You're going to make it. Can you tell three people? You're going to make it. Tell three people with your tears in your eyes, missing your mama and them. You're going to make it. They might fire you, but you're going to make it. Cancer in your body, but you're going to make it. Now don't wait till you make it. Praise them right now. You're going to make it. Tell one more person and look them in the eye and say the devil thought you were going to give up because it got overwhelming. But tell them you're going to make it. And when you make it, your testimony will be if it had not been for the Lord. Come on, praise him because you're going to make it. Praise him because this too shall pass. Praise him because your story. Y'all heard about the little girl who was running around the house looking for Andy. She went upstairs looking for Andy. Ran downstairs in the kitchen, opening cabinets, looking for Andy. Ran up to her big brother's room and said, have you seen Andy? He said, no. She ran to her mother's room, said, have you seen Andy? She said, no. She ran downstairs to the den and said, have you seen Andy? She said, no. Finally, the whole family got together and said, who in the world is Andy and what is he doing in our house? The little girl said, at church today, I heard the pastor say, Andy walks with me. Andy talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. Her daddy said, that ain't Andy. That's Jesus. And he will pick you up. And he will turn things around. And he will wipe every tear. High five somebody. Say, I hope you know Andy. Can't nobody. Excuse me, those of you of the other persuasion. This is called black church. And he will pay every bill. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody 
do me like the Lord, so praise him till you feel better. Praise him while you're overwhelmed. Let everything that has breath, let the black folk praise him. Let the white folk praise him. Let the Italians praise him. Let the old folk praise him. Throw your hands up and give him glory because you going to make it. 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 your neighbor's deliverance. I'm sorry if I'm a little loud today. Excuse me if I'm a little too exuberant today. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is what we're going to do. I am overwhelmed. And you may be overwhelmed. But let's dance and shout until the chains fall off. One, two, one, two, three, dance in this house. This is my I believe I'm gonna make it shout. This is my I believe he's gonna keep me shout. This is my I believe everything gonna be all right, gonna be all right. For me, one time for me, what is right now. Find you somebody else you ain't talked to. You might have to turn around and walk across the aisle, but just find somebody, lean over down the pew and get to somebody you ain't talked to the whole service and say, neighbor, tell them, neighbor, I'm not playing. I know I'm going to make it because I already have come through so much. I didn't think I would make it through. Can you shout, cause you made it? Can you shout, cause you made it? You made it, 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 to hell and back. You made it, he brought you, he brought you, he brought you, he kept you, he kept you. 
He brought me this car to leave me. Nobody told me. Nobody told me. your head up. I see you, Miss Angel Perez. I see you. I see you. Those of you who've lost special loved ones, I see you. And I know it's an unbearable weight. And for many of us, our hearts are just simply overwhelmed. But when my heart is overwhelmed, I'm asking, lead me to the rock. Lead me to the rock that's higher than I. Oh Lord, when my heart is over well I'm asking lead me to the rock anybody need God to lead me to the rock that's higher than I oh Lord higher than I sometimes that's, how, that's the only prayer you can pray about two weeks ago, I was on a plane and grief hit me, knocked me down. And I said, when my heart is overwhelmed, I'm asking, lead me to the rock. Come on, you, you, that got to be your prayer. Lead me to the rock that's higher than I. I need something else. Oh, Lord, when my heart, when my heart is overwhelmed, I'm asking, lead me to the rock. Where do you want him to lead you to? Lead me to the rock that's higher than I. Oh, Lord, higher than I. And then you got to ask him, lead me to the rock. Come on. Lead me to the rock. I want to go. Lead me to the rock. I want to go. Lead me to the rock. Lead me. Lead me to the rock. Here's why, here's why, here's why, here's why. Cause you are my firm foundation, yes, my salvation, my solid rock. You are my, you are my firm foundation, 
altar today I want to pray for you if your heart is overwhelmed and you say pastor I don't know if you've been in my business my emails my text messages if you've been reading my mind get to this altar it's worth to walk today this one ain't for everybody it's for the folk that said if God don't help me I'm gonna lose it all home I'm trying but it's a lot come close as you can 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 the keeper is still close. You are mine. You are my first foundation. My salvation. My salvation. My solid rock. Yes, he is. My solid rock. You are mine. You are my first foundation. Firm foundation. My salvation. My solid rock. My solid rock. My solid rock. You are mine. You are Bless my you. first my salvation. my salvation he's a keeper he's your solid rock, my solid rock. you are mine you are my first foundation my salvation my, salvation. my solid rock everybody my say it. come on tell rock. god you are mine you are my first foundation my salvation my solid rock my solid rock you are mine. You are my first foundation. My salvation. My solid rock. My solid Come rock. Come on. You are mine. You are my first foundation. My salvation. My salvation. Come on. Come on. Let God know I still trust you. You're my solid, my rock. solid rock. Say you are mine. You are my first foundation. My, my salvation. My salvation. Say you are mine. You are my first. How I'm still here and making it. My solid rock. 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 Everything else is falling. But you are my solid rock. Other people have passed. Who I used to lean on, but I had to learn that you are mine. That you are mine. My solid rock. You are mine. You are my foundation. My salvation. My solid rock. 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 My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy name on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground. It's sinking sand. My solid rock. My solid rock. My solid rock. My solid rock. You're gonna hold me. You're gonna keep me. I'ma get through this season with the help of the sovereign God. You're my solid rock. Aren't you glad to know you're not by yourself? Lord, we come. Some with fresh grief. Some of us come with old grief. 
I see members who just lost sisters two days ago. And God, I've spoken to members today that lost siblings 15 years ago. And no matter how old the overwhelm is, it can still feel brand new. So first, we want to say thank you that down through the years, you have been good to us. <laughs> Lord, you've been good. And we bless you for being a God we can trust with old and new struggles, old and new grief. We trust you that you will lead us to a rock, a safe, calm place where we can catch our breath from the affairs of life. So Lord, somebody is just looking for some peace today. Somebody needs to get out of their head. Somebody needs to be reminded that through all the clouds, you will give them a little sunlight. Through the midnight, you'll still let them see moonlight. And you remind us that we are never by ourselves. Cover the grieving daughters. Cover the grieving sons. Cover the grieving parents. Cover the grieving siblings. Cover the grieving children, Lord. Cover the grieving family members, grieving friends who are overwhelmed by so many things that have happened. And God, some of us are in a good season. It's just a lot of pressure. Because the higher you go, the heavier life is. So we thank you for the favor of giving us promotions and increase and financial stability. Thank you for helping us break generational traumas. And thank you for being a cycle breaker. Now, God, help us with the weight of it all. Because some weight is good weight, but it's still heavy weight. And we need you, oh, we need you. Through the storm, through the rain, through sickness, through pain, we still trust you. Lead us. Lead us. Our eyes are so filled with tears we can't see some days, so just get in front of us and lead us. In the name, in the name of Jesus, it is already well and it's already done in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. Amen. Give somebody a hug and tell them you're going to make it. You're going to make it. I, I promise you in the name of Jesus, you're going to make it. As you go to your seat, you touch somebody, hug somebody, dap somebody, touch them on the shoulder, say, you're going to make it. Oh, my solid rock. My solid, my solid rock, 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 my solid rock. Tell the Lord you are my solid rock, my solid rock, my solid rock, my solid rock, my Sometimes it's a lot, but you are everything, my solid rock. My solid, rock. My solid rock. Listen, we got to get out of here. The doors of the church are open. Has anybody been fed today? Has anybody's soul been inspired today? I'm so glad that God is the God of all people. All ages. All races. All sexualities. All demographics. God is everybody's God. And I'm glad today that we have a savior. Come on, look at you. Look at the doors are open. They, they coming already. I ain't even really extend the invitation. Welcome home. Welcome home. He's a rock in a weary land. Shelter. Where my old school saints. He's a shelter in the time of a storm. Welcome. Stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. Anybody else need to come? Come on, come on. He's a lily in the valley. He's a bright and morning star. He's a heart fixer. 
That's old school talk. He's a mind regulator. Yes, he is. A bridge over troubled waters. If there's anybody here, come on, come on. If you need Christ, come on. Come on, you may be overwhelmed, but you're not alone. And you can overcome being overwhelmed because you are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Fellowship, I know we're seated, but I want you to help me make some noise for these who are coming today. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You are my my salvation. My salvation. My solid rock. You are my You are my solid rock. Don't leave before the benediction. You are my You are my, you are my, 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 my solid rock. My so you are mine. You are my firm foundation. My salvation. My salvation. My solid rock. My solid rock. If you gotta leave, you can leave, but I don't want you to leave before the benediction. If you're walking only at this time, should you be joining the church? The only people walking should be those joining the church, coming to Christ, or coming home. Because you need to make some changes and rededicate your life. If you're here, come on, come on. Only walking at this time if you're coming to Christ. Say, so you are mine. Can we celebrate one, two, three, four? These ladies that have come today. My solid rock. You are mine. Some of y'all going to sing this all week long. You're going to go to work tomorrow. Talking about you. You're my solid rock. You're going to go to sleep tonight and fluff your pillow and just. You're my firm foundation. Mine. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You coming today? Come on. God bless you. You are mine. My first foundation, my salvation. My solid rock. 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 Aren't you glad you're here? Aren't you glad you're alive? Aren't you glad you made it? Cause he's been your solid rock. Cause he's been your solid rock. Cause he's been your solid rock. Everything has changed. But God stayed the same. Everything has changed. But God stayed the same. But God stayed the same. But God stayed the same. But God has stayed the same. God has stayed the same. He's your solid rock. He's your solid rock. And you've lost a lot. But you're still alive. Because God is your solid rock. The Lord has given. The Lord has taken away. But blessed be. Y'all excuse me, I'm sorry. I said blessed be the name of the Lord. He's a solid rock. He's a solid rock. He is, he is, he is, he, he is my firm foundation. He's my salvation. He's my solid rock. Y'all excuse me. He is mine. He is my first You ain't lived through nothing. You don't know what's wrong with the pastor right now. But if you've been kept, if you've been covered, if you bounce back from stuff you didn't think you would survive, you understand. You understand? We welcome these five that have come today. Y'all give them a big hand. Give them a big welcome. We thank God for being our sustainer. And I thank Jesus for being our savior. At this time, I want to put you in the hands of our First Touch ministry. They're going to get some information to you and from you. Fellowship, welcome our new family members. Give them a big God bless you. Come on, let them feel you all the way downstairs. Let them feel you. Oh, yeah. Tell your neighbor, you're going to be all right. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I feel old school. Can we leave out on an old school number? 
Let me leave out. Y'all gonna stand up and let's get out of here. Down through the years, I know the Lord's been good to me. Oh, oh, oh down. down through the years, I know the Lord. Lord. You're down at your grandma's church in Georgia, Mississippi. Come on, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Arkansas. Oh, all of my life, yes, sir, God's been good to me. Oh, oh, oh. Religion, I didn't get it in no dream. Just shake me, wake me in the midnight hour. I'll tell you everything I've seen. I come to tell you that down through the years, y'all forgive me. George is coming out. The Lord's been good to me. Oh, down through the Together, we going home. This that kind of church you gotta stop and clap. Well, my Mississippi double clapper. Listen, one of these mornings and it won't be long You're gonna look round for sharp and I'll be gone I'm going up to glory, gonna sing and shout Won't be nobody there to put me out I'm gonna chat with the Father and talk with the Son I'm gonna tell him about the world that I just came from And if you don't believe that I've been redeemed Just follow me home down to the Jordan stream where I stepped in the water I stepped in the water I stepped 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 in the water the water was cold it chilled my body but not my soul and I know my road is gonna fit me well cause I tried it all at the gates of hell and me me Jesus in the middle of of the air, cause if my wings shall fail me, I need another pair, and I know God kept me through it all, there's been nobody else that I can call, he stopped right in when I didn't have a dime, he's always there, he's right on time, he'll pick you up and turn you around, he'll place your feet on Y'all ain't ready. Y'all don't know nothing about this on the south side of Chicago. Down through the years, one more time, say, down through the years, I know God's been good to me. Oh. keep you near the cross may your troubles show that you need God may your battles end the way they should 
and may your bad days prove that God is good. I pray your whole life keeps on proving that God really is good. I'm going to shake hands for about 10 minutes in the back. Come holler at me if I haven't seen you in a minute. Peace, peace. How about somebody and say, you're going to make it? 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 Oh, you're going to make it. You, bless you, bless you. Have a good week. Have a good week. Have a good week. Be safe. Be safe. Be safe. Sunday Fellowship, I'm Mark Jones, and this is your weekly edition of FNN Fellowship News Network. Join us for Refuel this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Pastor Sharp will be leading us with a powerful lesson on the theme of carrying my grief case. Don't miss out on this opportunity to come together, grow, and be inspired. We can't wait to see you there. Mark your calendars for Saturday, December 2nd, as the Callahan Foundation hosts their 15th annual scholarship gala at the Tinley Park Convention Center. Our very own pastor, Reginald Wayne Sharp, will be a special honoree, and it will be live entertainment by PJ Morton. You can purchase tickets on their website to attend. Proceeds will go towards supporting college students entering the workforce. We are praying for the family of Mr. Joseph Kist, the brother of virtual member Caroline Melson. Please keep this family and all of those who have experienced the loss of a loved one in your prayers. If you have lost a loved one, please call the church office or complete our bereavement form on our website so that we will be notified. And now we have some special announcements for you. Check them out. What's going on, family? It's your friend, your brother, Pastor Kevin Basser. I'm so excited. I have a quick announcement for you. January the 19th, my full project, it's finally coming. The title is It's Not Over. It's going to be available all over the world on all digital outlets, but you know how we get down. I want you to go to KevinVassar.com and get it. Now, why am I announcing it today? Because as of November the 10th, you can start pre-ordering right now. And as a gift, when you pre-order, you're going to get two free songs, and one of them is the new single that's out. It's ready. Most Hi, I want you to go to my website or whatever digital outlet you want to go to, and I want you to pre-order today. Get those two new songs and listen. Also, the new video for Most High. Yeah, it's available right now. We give you glory. We give you honor. You are so worthy. We lift your name. Everybody say. Go to my YouTube page or anywhere, wherever you watch videos, and you can check out the new single as well. Let's pre order. Let's get these numbers up. Let's change the world because, listen, it's not over. God's got some good things coming your way in Jesus' name. I love you guys and thank you. you are so Join us for Empowering the Village, a discussion on adoption and child advocacy. A town hall and panel discussion on Wednesday, November 15th at 5.30 p.m. in the main sanctuary. Adoption touches lives in profound ways, shaping the destinies of countless individuals and families. It's a process that spans hope, joy, resilience, and the enduring power of love. However, important conversations still need to occur, questions to be answered, and perspectives to be shared. 
This Adoption Town Hall aims to be a space for these discussions where ideas and experiences can blend to create a brighter, more inclusive future for foster care and adoption. We look forward to seeing you here Wednesday at 5.30. That's a wrap for this week's edition of FNN. Please check out the church website and our social media for these announcements and so much more. And for real-time updates, text Fellowship Chicago, that's one word, to 55949. Have a great week.